four brothers. Saffon. Bagan. Under. And Ofla, bound by eternal purpose. and a girl named Moor. Moore has learned to sleep under the hissing tubes and the ever-humming chambers. The pumping cylinders give her comfort, the drumming of a job well done. Nothing startles her more than silence. There is no rest for the apprentice. Moore has done so much around here, repaired and watched and built, but in this deathly silence, she is once more taunted by the one thing she will never be able to do. Their engineering can be studied and replicated, but their strength they selfishly keep. Despite all the wiring and the manufactured tubes, the engines are powered by physical force. But the kind that no mere human could ever muster.
Safan. He was always the weakest of the four. He is struggling to breathe. Even Mo can taste the stale air in her mouth. It seems the ventilation system isn't working properly, but nothing does without the engine. Without power, the observatory is not much use. like a punch to the chest. It is all four of them. They all broke at the same time. Failed at the same time. Something grave must have occurred. But what? Without the veil, the air is too toxic to breathe. And just as more feared, the vents have all shut. The poison is kept out, but so is the oxygen. Safan is slowly suffocating, and the other three may have it worse. Thank you. 
It shows all three purifiers are down, as if more needed any confirmation beyond the spores in the air. This is on you, Safan. Mo grunts. Pray it is not too late for me to fix your mess. made it clear. It died a long time ago, and now the spores are taking hold of whatever remains. A better fate than the fungus eating you alive. Do not worry. I will fix your mess, and I will save our homes. Moore reassures herself.
is. She knows the damage the spores are capable of. The fungus first poisoning the mind, then ever so slowly, consuming the body. How it will spoil the verdant soil and obscure the midday sun. Despite all of its dangers, more frequently inhales the poison. An occupational hazard, she calls it. A sacrifice others weren't willing to make. A few violent coughs, a few eerie apparitions won't keep her from doing her job. After all, she is the bearer of the Omni-Switch. Once a bustling place, before the great exodus, now just a pile of broken things and abandoned ideas, the island hosts the purifiers guarding Safran's domain, and not much else anymore. Children used to all come here together. Miri, Moor, their friends, for the seaberry jam, the scarecrows, and the rides. And then the exodus happened. berries fills her nostrils, or is it a scent lingering in her memories?
Her uncle's estate. He should be inside, with the windows shut and doors locked. Moore's heart skips a beat. Either the fungus got to him, or he is somewhere out there, fiddling with the purifiers himself. these masks, the people who once wore them, the lingering memories of people, in one way or another, now gone. Moore's uncle owned this place. He still somehow does. One ride was two coins, back when money still meant something. The machine looks intact. It is resting, waiting for a spark.
Her uncle always told stories about his big plans, how people would come from far off lands. He spent all his fortune on his dream. All that's left is the rot in the jars. Moore never understood the appeal of bones to decorate a tourist attraction. It's authentic, her uncle would say, but he'd always dodge the question of whether the bones were from a whale or another large creature.
He didn't want kids sneaking around, breaking things, or adults stealing things. But more was always welcome here. More was family. the heat on her tongue and fingers as she snuck a taste of the steaming sweet sour jam. For weeks after, she'd carry a little teaspoon so she wouldn't have to wash her hands. locks, protecting his property, as if a crowd might wander once again. she saw the farmer singing a song as he lit a candle by this tree. She didn't understand what he meant until later. The things are only gone when they are forgotten. Members excitedly showing everyone who would humor her the sounds and rhythms of the machine underneath the land. Her uncle always stayed the longest, 
watching her face light up the little dark holes inside. The old wood groans, dreaming of past revolutions, resolute to be a solution once more, before turning to dust. The berry farmer sighs, exhausted from his struggle. Living things are his purview, not machines. So for all his troubles, all his striving to fix the machine, it simply bore no fruit. More frowns, her frustration growing. She warned him not to toy with the machines. Moore's uncle huffs, disappointed at his niece's rudeness. For heaven's sake, was I meant to just watch as the poisonous dust slowly settled around my island? He was meant to stay inside and wait for her to be done. His heroics were simply unneeded. Washes over her uncle at the sight of her success. Feeling thankful and a little ashamed, he offers some seaberry wine as reconciliation. He hands over his key, a sign of his trust, and asks her to fetch them a bottle of his finest, the one tucked away in the shed. Thank <laughs> you. 
Maybe she is being too harsh on her uncle. He is only trying to help, after all. Moore considers the bottle in her hands and spending a small moment with the farmer. But too many lives are in danger. Too many things are at stake. The glass will simply have to wait. This was once Moore's little spot, her quiet haven on Bever's shores, where Moore could be herself and analyze the giants and their things as much as she desired. of the day that she left Beva. It was bittersweet, like burnt jam, stuck to the pot. to keep little trinkets in this hole until the day she reached a little too far. Her uncle always laughs as he retells the story of the proudest fish he caught, the mole.
The half-rotten wood creaks in hunger, seeking, ready to devour. first time doing this. A few violent coughs, a few eerie apparitions. She has been sent to these places before. She has trained herself to escape. She just has to remember the tune.
I'm okay, she tells herself, but it feels more real than ever. Someone is shouting. I'm okay, she replies. I'm okay. She lies. He is glad that he found her, and he laughs off his worry for now. But unvoiced irritation sticks in his throat. He knows she will downplay it. It is routine now, the arguments they have had on repeat, about her hypocritical ways, how she doesn't wear a mask when she forces others to, how she poisons herself. He settles instead for just a few words of concern. Careful, he smiles. Please come back in one piece. And don't forget to see after your sister. She pretends to not hear him. Bourne and Beva are cleansed, but the batteries won't last. It's time for Zaffa to do his part.
With the spores gone, the air is allowed back in, and so is she. When they gave her the Omni Switch, they honored and bound her, the human they chose as their apprentice, now tasked to save them all. Somewhere deep in this labyrinth, the power lines are cut. should flow through this capacitor, but it's not finding its way here. What do you think will happen when you leave? Who will take your place? You are staying right here. On these forsaken rocks you call a home.
The fuses blew out. Of course. The brothers may be old, but they are not immortal, and neither are you. What will be left of you when you're gone? Only dust and crumbling bones.
a death sentence. That's what every plant brought down here will find. Things don't flower this deep underground. They wither. You can feel it yourself, can't you? Safan can't keep this up for long, not without his brothers 